Let us pray. Gracious God, font and source of inspiration, goodness in all things, we ask your blessing upon these students who we honor today for their achievements. For each unique individual made in your holy likeness, for the joy, friendship, challenge, and support they have offered to one another, we give thanks. We celebrate their capacity for creativity, for critical thinking, for focused effort, for countless opportunities to grow and develop, for discovering a sense of meaning, belonging, and purpose along the way. We give thanks. Thank you for their confidence to discover and explore new possibilities and knowledge to discern what is right and good and just for the unwavering encouragement of their families, educators, and community, for those who have loved them well and have taught them to love, we give thanks. Enable them to draw upon the wisdom and experience of yesterday as they respond to the questions and concerns of tomorrow. Through their actions, may they always be messengers of unity and reconciliation with and for the broken and wounded, those in need of healing, and those oppressed by all acts of injustice throughout our world. May they be change makers for your goodness in a place and time so deeply in need of love. Gracious God, support our honored students as they continue to make a difference in the world leading lives that foster unity in a world rife with division. Guide them as their journeys continue, keeping them energized and persistent in living the mission of Chestnut Hill College. We ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. Today's Honors Convocation is a special day as it represents the first convocation hosted by Chestnut Hill College since August of 2019. Yes, please be seated. Convocations, along with other days at the college, such as commencement, are formal academic events, including the faculty processing in their regalia as an indication of the capacity, tradition, innovation, and vision that they represent. Rest assured that many of us in the CHC community are here this after afternoon, mindful of the special meaning that this day holds. For those students here who joined the college in fall of 2018 or fall of 2019, you may recall participating in the opening convocation when you were welcomed to CHC in this same space. Never would we have anticipated then the events that would change each of our lives in so many ways. The dynamics of the COVID-19 pandemic, the renewed call to confront racism and promote social justice, the economic uncertainties that characterized many of our experiences, and the more recent war in Ukraine were each and our causes for alarm and for action. Students, family, faculty, staff, and all the members here today from the CHC community, thank you for affirming this celebration of academic accomplishments with your presence. 
Following some of the preliminary addresses this afternoon, we will be introducing faculty members who will each be sharing and celebrating the accomplishments of our students and the honors they've achieved. As we take time to acknowledge each student honor, we are reminded of the exceptional accomplishment of our students working in collaboration with their faculty. As Dean of the Faculty, I also want to take this occasion, as I have taken others, to express my gratitude, admiration, pride, and appreciation to the faculty who, over the course of a weekend in March 2020, moved an entire instructional program to remote delivery. In full support of students and with the support of so many others in the CHC community, they persevered to continue the delivery of our academic programs under unprecedented circumstances. Today, we also acknowledge the leadership and legacy of Sister Carol Jean Vale, president of Chestnut Hill College. To just briefly summarize Sister Carol's impact on the academic enterprise at CHC, consider the following. 90% of the current Chestnut Hill College faculty, full-time faculty, were hired during Sister Carol's presidency. If we consider the accelerated adult degree programs, new graduate programs, new undergraduate programs, and the college adopting co-education, at least eight in 10 current CHC students are enrolled in programs or through pathways that did not exist before Sister Carroll became president. Innovation and change in academics under Sister Carroll have included the renovation or construction of every learning space used today. New directions under Sister Carroll's leadership also include the introduction of remote, accelerated, and online learning, and the creation of multiple mission-centered institutes. During her tenure, CHC expanded or introduced programs in areas spanning computer science and information technology, psychology and behavioral health, education, human services and justice studies, natural sciences, business, communication, and global studies, all informed by and rooted in a mission-centered commitment to the liberal arts. Truly an exceptional contribution to academics at Chestnut Hill College. Thank you, Sister Carol. Students being honored today, please note that your names also appear in the booklet for, created for today's convocation event, and we encourage you and any of your supporters joining you today to preserve it as a reminder of your accomplishments. I now introduce Dr. Mark Meacham, Dean of the School of Undergraduate Studies, who will share his welcome with you today. Good afternoon. And welcome to all of our guests, visitors, students, staff, and faculty. I am especially honored to take part in my first honors convocation here on campus. As we conclude our academic year, I want to thank each and every one of you for your participation in this community of learners that is Chestnut Hill College. Exemplary teaching in and out of our classrooms, engaged participation by our students in those curricular and co-curricular activities, mentoring by staff and fellow students, support by family and friends. All of the things that happen here are possible only because of each one of you. In recent weeks, we have celebrated the Christian feast of Easter, the Jewish feast of Passover, and for our Muslim brothers and sisters, we mark the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Every day here, we are edified by the examples of community members living their faiths in service to each other, to their communities, and to the earth. These three holy periods emphasize a connection to our history, the importance of service to others, and the need for growth and renewal, goals consistent with the aims of a Chestnut Hill holistic education. So while our social media feeds constantly remind us that there is much work to be done to nurture and support the dear neighbor, it is important that we take time to reflect and celebrate those here on campus who are working to make their world better and there is much to celebrate. Today, we honor academic achievement, leadership, and service among our students. The hard work you displayed in your classrooms, in your co-curricular activities, and in your own spiritual life has been brought forth and put on display for the college community. You have earned admittance to the Dean's List, to honor societies, earned special medals and awards, and departmental honors. So today, let us celebrate these members of our Chestnut Hill College family their accomplishments, and the bright future of the promise that lies ahead. Welcome.
I am delighted to welcome each of you as we honor academic achievement, leadership, and service this afternoon. We celebrate the four Chestnut Hill College faculty who were honored as faculty emerita at the Retirement and Service Awards in April. Two of these faculty members, Dr. Aida Bopier and Professor Judith Sullivan, will share their perspectives on the academic experience at Chestnut Hill College. Their new rank, emerita, is not merely an honor. Ex meritus, out of, or from, sorry, merit, means that they earned it by dedication to research, performance, teaching, service, and hard work in their disciplines all on behalf of students and the Chestnut Hill College community. Their contributions to Chestnut Hill College, represented by their teaching, scholarship, and service, constitute a deep legacy of which many of the students honored today are beneficiaries. The first to speak is Dr. Aida Bopier. Dr. Bopier is a professor of Spanish and received her doctoral degree at Yale University in 1988 with a specialization in colonial Spanish American literature. She is the author of two books and numerous articles exploring the works of modern poets. In addition, several of her works on Cuban studies have appeared in critical anthologies. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Bopier. Thank you, Sister Carol, for your kind introduction. Uh, anticipating that some of you may not understand me very clearly due to my strong New Jersey accent, <laughs> it worked. Thank you. It's obligatory to start with a joke. I appreciate the laughter. But I did learn English in New Jersey. Um, I've, I've decided not to improvise, but read my remarks in an attempt to reduce the amount of mispronunciations. Because of my imminent retirement, I've been asked to give a reflection here today as I was searching for an appropriate theme that would also allow me to convey my feelings as I retire from Chestnut Hill College, I decided to offer a reflection on gratitude. Perhaps you know, as it is with so many things, that there is a history to the expression thank you, that customary utterance that we use so often almost compulsively. While it is true that the history of giving thanks is ancient, saying thank you, particularly saying it as often as we do, has not always conveyed the experience of joy that we associate with an unburdened feeling of gratitude. Many, if not most of us, assume that the act of giving thanks is one of the many ways in which we express our connectedness. We assume that saying thank you amounts to saying something like, I see your beautiful gesture and celebrate the links that unite us. Thanks to Maria Popova's blog, Brain Pickings, an invaluable source of uh, references, I discovered that this has not always been the case. Popova cites the book Debt, the first 5,000 years, by anthropologist David Graeber, in which he explore, ex, explores a moment in European history during the commercial revolution of the 16th and 17th centuries when giving thanks entailed a sense of debt and with it of inequity. Graeber reminds us that in English, thank, thank you der derives from think in a sense of I will think in order to remember my debt to you. Thank you, in other European languages, conveys a similar idea of obligation and potential liability. In Portuguese, obrigado is the counterpart of the English term much oblige. The French merci connotes the idea of mercy, as in begging for mercy. I quote from Graeber, by saying merci, you are symbolically placing yourself in your benefactor's power, since a debtor 
is, after all, potentially a criminal. In spite of its etymological association with the Latin terms gratia, gratus, gratia agere, and their connection with the idea of gratuitous or free of burden expressions of gratitude, the use of the Spanish gracias was not totally exempt from the tacit sense of debt that tainted other European languages during, the, during and after the commercial revolution. I use the term tainted to understand, to underscore the idea of disconnection and lack of equality described in Graeber's book. This idea of disconnection is tainted or defective by the erroneous perception that it is possible to help another without helping oneself. As if it were not true that in the words of Whitman, every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. We should be alert on the lingering presence of the misperception of separateness in so many of our interactions and how that misperception perpetuates the illusion that there is a hierarchical order between humans. Since words are inevitably contaminated, perhaps instead of worrying about words, it would be better to observe and question our assumptions about each other and our place in the world, assumptions that appear constantly as it happens when we give and receive expressions of gratitude. I've used this reflection as a preamble to the opportunity that has been given me today to express my own burden and immense gratitude for my years working at Chesnut Hill College. I thank you students for your work, for the promise that you represent, for the gifts that you will disseminate as you move forward. It has been a privilege to teach and to learn from you. To those among you whom I had the opportunity of meeting in my courses, including so many students who are not here today, I will miss and in our interactions that contributed to keeping me young at heart. I also thank your families and friends for the support they've given you, for the love that has played such essential role in sustaining and giving you strength. Thank you, Sister Carol, Chris Doherty, and the members of the committee responsible for granting me the honor of Professor Emerita. I would have felt equally connected to CHC for the rest of my life, but I'm very grateful that this distinction will make that connection more evident. To you, Sister Carol, to the staff, to the administrators, I'm grateful for the, your efforts in keeping this institution faithful to the inspiring mission of the Sisters of St. Joseph. To all the members of the faculty, including my dear colleagues in the Foreign Language Department, it has been a blessing to work among you these years. I take this opportunity to tell you that my gratitude is indistinguishable from my admiration for you. I know how very demanding your jobs are, and yet you always dazzle me with your generosity and your dedication. Thank you very especially to those among you that have become my dear friends, as well as my teachers. I have witnessed and celebrated the high caliber of your endeavor, endeavors. Dear faculty, I am only going to mention one of you by name, not because I wish to set her apart from the others, but on the contrary, because in naming and thanking you, Sister Mary Helen Kashuba, I recognize you as a beautiful example of everything that is full of grace and brilliance in Chestnut Hill College. Thank you all, muchas gracias. Thank you, Aida. I now introduce Professor Judith Sullivan to share her thoughts with us. Professor Sullivan is Associate Professor of Mathematics 
and recipient of the Christian R. and Mary F. Lindback Award for Distinguished Teaching in 2013. Her research has included publications on academic success for college learners, and she has provided expertise in faculty development for teachers spanning middle school to higher education environments. Please join me in welcoming Professor Judy Sullivan. Good afternoon. We are here to celebrate a level of excellence that each of you has achieved. In simple terms, striving for excellence means pursuing the best that we can be, always giving it our all and never settling for less than our finest. It means putting quality into what we do and aiming to do an even better job the next time around. It also means having the commitment to pursue excellence in whatever it is that we want to achieve, big or small, in academics, on the job, on the field or court, and in our personal lives. Excellence is doing ordinary things extraordinarily well, according to American educator John W. Gardner. For a few minutes, I'd like to share with you some things I have learned about excellence. It isn't the same thing as perfection. In nearly all situations, no matter how hard we try, we will not attain perfection. And if we're consumed by always trying to be perfect, we can experience constant disappointment. The good news is that although absolute perfection may be out of reach for all of us, everyone can reach for their own level of excellence. The pursuit of excellence is a journey, a daily, never-ending journey. We create and implement a plan and we carefully monitor our progress so that we are able to track, notice, and celebrate even incremental gains. Once you reach a first goal, you can set your sights on another one and then another. As Michael Jordan, the basketball great, has said, excellence isn't a one-week or a one-year ideal. It's a constant. But it does involve hard work determination, and believing in yourself. And even with the will to succeed, there are bound to be times when a goal seems impossible to reach, and that can be discouraging. But don't give up, because the key to success is persistence with a capital P. Keep a positive attitude and keep going, working to overcome obstacles you encounter, always striving to do your best. You are fortunate to have selected CHC for your college experience. When I came to Chestnut Hill College, I immediately noticed the unique atmosphere of community that exists here, an atmosphere in which every person is valued. You are among people who care about you and want the best for you, and I have been proud to be part of that atmosphere. So when you feel that you need it, don't hesitate to reach out for assistance. Make use of the many resources that are available to you. It is far easier to achieve excellence in an environment of encouragement and support such as exists here. You are not on this journey alone. The passion and energy that faculty and staff have for helping you succeed make Chestnut Hill College special and truly a place where you can find yourself and take yourself far. Congratulations on what you have already achieved and best wishes for your future success. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. We are grateful to both of you for the time and thought you put into your presentations today. We thank you for the inestimable number of contributions you have made to our college community over your years of service here, and we wish you the best of blessings as you move on. 
but you remember, once a griffin, always a griffin, and you're always welcome back here. Chris has asked me to say a couple of words, and usually I would focus on the students and your outstanding success. That's the reason you're here this afternoon. Your perseverance and tenacity, everything that you've done and done so well over your time at Chestnut Hill, whether you're finishing your studies or still in transit, so to speak, you're here because you did good work. But today, I want to talk about our faculty. And I want to begin by saying this. I will never forget the first time I was sitting interviewing one of you and realized I could be your mother. <laughs> and now I would have to say, unfortunately, I have interviewed some of you and I could be your grandmother. However, I want to acknowledge our outstanding faculty for their devotion and commitment to the college and to you, our students and your families. Over these 30 years together, we have built a faculty that is academically gifted and intellectually astute. Almost all have earned the highest degree in their fields and have made serious and respected contributions to their disciplines. Not only do they publish books and articles in peer-reviewed journals, they also serve as editors of academic publications, lend their time as peer reviewers, and give presentations at national and international conferences. To complement their scholarship, they provide service in many different and varied ways to marginalized and vulnerable populations, as well as to professional organizations. The time and energy they selflessly give outside of the institution is both admirable and exemplary. Faculty scholarship is on full display in the innovative curricular offerings, new majors and programs that they have developed to keep pace with the expectations of 21st century learners. Complementing the majors is a new and dynamic core curriculum conceived by and to be implemented by the faculty, a core that incorporates the best and latest elements of pedagogy with the mission and values of the college. It is a brilliant piece of work, and I believe students will be intellectually stimulated and personally transformed by it. In recent years, the faculty responded to a request to look at academic governance differently. The outcome, six centers uniting instead of separating academic departments. In these centers, faculty come together in new ways that empower them to think with their colleagues from different disciplinary perspectives in order to work toward even more innovative programs and new ways of understanding their fields. You students know well their expertise in the classroom and their facility in stretching young minds to think new ideas, identify avenues for action, and dream of the future you can help create. Students benefit daily from faculty mentorship and a willingness to go the extra mile when students need assistance outside of scheduled classroom hours. Our faculty loves our students. They love your sons and daughters, and that is no small fact. Seniors, before you leave the campus on May 21st, you might want to take a moment to offer your gratitude to those who most influenced you and helped you succeed, not just academically, but also personally. Those whose example made you a better woman or a better man. Members of the faculty, Thank you for your extraordinary selfless service throughout the pandemic and for all the preceding years of your presence at the college. 
I am proud to know you, proud of the growth that is so evident among us, the many ways you have contributed to your disciplines, to society, and to the college community have made this college on two hills a truly praiseworthy institution. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing our faculty. Thank you, Sister Carl. <clears throat> As we begin our academic recognitions, please note that the names appearing in the program are those received by the program print date. At this time, I would like to introduce the President of Student Government, Neali Rodriguez. As president of student government, I would like to acknowledge fellow students who excelled academically and who were named to the academic honors dean's list for the, la for the past two consecutive semesters. I ask the students whose names appear in the program for the dean's list to please stand and be recognized. Please join me in congratulating them. Dr. William Langer, Associate Professor of Philosophy, will now acknowledge the students who have completed departmental honors. Will the students who completed the departmental honors program for the 2021-2022 academic year in their respective majors please stand? The Departmental Honors Program is designed to offer excellent students an opportunity to work independently in their major discipline under the direction of a faculty director to complete a research project of their choosing. Traditionally, research culminates in an honors thesis submitted in April of the student's senior year, although this deadline may change if the student is graduating in December. Those students who successfully complete the program graduate with honors in their major, acknowledged on their Chestnut Hill College transcript. Eligibility is determined by mastery of the major field and by general ability. To be eligible, a student must have declared a major, have a grade point average of 3.6 or higher in the major, and an overall grade point average of 3.5 or higher and they must have completed 60 semester hours toward his or her degree, 12 of which must be credits in the major. In addition, the student must have the recommendation of the faculty in the major department. Uh, please join me in congratulating those seniors who will graduate with departmental honors. So I'm, I'm filling in for uh, Mia Grogan for the Interdisciplinary Honors Program. And will the, the students who have completed the Interdisciplinary Honors Program please stand? The interdisciplinary honors program at Chestnut Hill College provides highly motivated students a broad, unifying, and challenging introduction to the liberal arts through interdisciplinary seminars 
and aims to integrate knowledge from different disciplines. Please join me in congratulating these Chestnut Hill College students who have completed the requirements for the Interdisciplinary uh, Scholars Program. Uh, Dr. Elliot Tamaro, uh, Assistant Professor of Physics, will now announce the members of Alpha Lambda Delta. Will the newly inducted members of Alpha Lambda Delta please stand? Alpha Lambda Delta is a national honor society that honors high scholastic achievement during a student's first year at college. The mission of this honor society is to encourage a continuation of outstanding academic achievement, to promote intelligent living, and a high standard of learning, as well as to assist students in recognizing and developing meaningful goals in society. First year students of the Chestnut Hill College chapter of Alpha Lambda Delta have achieved a, a grade point average of 3.5 or higher by the end of their first semester or their first year while at Chestnut Hill. Congratulations again to, your, to you for your achievement. <clears throat> If we have any senior members of the Alpha Lambda Delta Chestnut Hill College Circle of Excellence, you may please stand. <laughs> members of the Chestnut Hill College chapter of Alpha Lambda Delta who maintain a 3.5 grade point average or higher each semester are invited to join the Circle of Excellence. These graduating seniors have achieved this distinction. Again, congratulations. It is now my pleasure to award the Alpha Lambda Delta Senior Book Award. Maria Leonard was the founder of the National Alpha Lambda Delta Honor Society. And each year, the society offers, in her name, a book award to be received by the graduating senior in Alpha Lambda Delta who achieved the highest grade point average over four years. When I announce your name, please come forward to accept your award. Alexandra Bilbrow, Bilbrow. <laughs> Congratulations. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Lauren Barrow, Associate Professor of Criminal Justice, to introduce the members of Alpha Phi Sigma. Good afternoon. I would like to ask graduating seniors and new members of Alpha Phi Sigma to please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Alpha Phi Sigma, the National Criminal Justice Honor Society and the only criminal justice honor society which is a certified member of the Association of College Honor Societies and affiliated with the Academy of Criminal Justice Sciences recognizes academic excellence of undergraduate and graduate students in criminal justice as well as Juris Doctorate students. Students invited into Alpha Phi Sigma must have completed at least 12 credits in the criminal justice major, have a GPA of at least 3.2 in their major courses, 
have an overall GPA of 3.2, be in the top 35% of their class, and be approved by the department. Please join me in honoring graduating seniors and newly inducted members of Chestnut Hill College New Epsilon Chapter of Alpha Phi Sigma. Congratulations, students. I would now like to introduce Dr. Elaine Green, Dean of the School of Continuing and Professional Studies, to acknowledge the members of Alpha Sigma Lambda. Will new members of Alpha Sigma Lambda please stand? Alpha Sigma Lambda is a national honor society for non-traditional undergraduate students typically over the age of 24, who achieve and maintain outstanding scholastic standards and leadership characteristics while fulfilling the many responsibilities of family, work, and community service. Potential inductees have earned a minimum of 30 graded credits. Members are selected from the highest 10% of the population and must have earned a career GPA of 3.6. Please join me in congratulating the new members of Epsilon Sigma Chapter of Alpha Sigma Lambda. I would now like to introduce Jesse Bowser, Director of Athletics and Recreation for the Chi Alpha Sigma Honor Society. I invite the new senior members and new junior members of Chi Alpha Sigma to please stand. Here at Chestnut Hill College, we have 18 varsity sports teams with over 326 student athletes. Not only did our student athletes excel in their respective sports, they achieved in the classroom as well. Congratulations to all Chi Alpha Sigma members. Mark Meacham, Dean of School of Undergraduate Studies, will introduce the members of the Delta Epsilon Sigma Honor Society. I invite seniors and newly inducted members of Delta Epsilon Sigma to please stand. <laughs> Delta Epsilon Sigma is a national honor society founded to recognize academic accomplishment, to foster scholarly activities, and to encourage a sense of intellectual community among its members. Candidates for membership must be persons who have a record of outstanding academic accomplishment, who have shown their dedication to intellectual activity, and who have accepted their responsibility of service to others. Congratulations to the seniors and newly inducted members of Delta Epsilon Sigma. It is now my pleasure to introduce Susan Sikloski, Instructor of Computer Science to recognize members of Epsilon Pi Tau. Will seniors and newly inducted members of Epsilon Pi Tau please stand? Epsilon Pi Tau, the leading international honor society for technology, recognizes academic excellence of students in fields devoted to the study of technology and the preparation of practitioners for the technology professions. 
Students accepted into Epsilon Pi Tau must have completed at least 18 computer science or computer technology credits, have a GPA of at least 3.25 in their computer courses, an overall GPA of 3.0, are in the top 35% of their class, and have been approved by the department. Please join me in congratulating our graduating seniors and newly inducted members into Epsilon Pi Tau. Congratulations. I invite Sister Marie Leahy, Associate Professor of Education, to introduce the members of Kappa Delta Epsilon. I invite the seniors and new members of Kappa Delta Epsilon to please stand. <laughs> Kappa Delta Epsilon is an honorary professional society, the purpose of which is to promote the cause of education by fostering a spirit of fellowship, high standards of scholastic attainment, and professional ideals among its members. Members are invited and expected to maintain a career GPA of 3.0 or higher and have been formally accepted into the education department. Congratulations to our seniors and our new members. I now invite Mark Meacham, Dean of the School of Undergraduate Studies, to the podium to recognize the members of Kappa Gamma Pi. Will newly inducted members of Kappa Gamma Pi please stand? Kappa Gamma Pi is the National Catholic College Graduate Honor Society. Membership is limited to no more than 10% of the graduating class and is based on scholarship, leadership, and service. By the end of seven semesters or equivalent, a career grade point average of 3.60 or above is required. Members are selected in recognition of past accomplishments and also in anticipation of future service. Congratulations to the new members of Kappa Gamma Pi. It is now my pleasure to invite Nora Madison, Associate Professor of Communications, to come to the podium to announce the members of Lambda Pi Eta. I invite all seniors and new members of Lambda Pi Eta to please stand. Lambda Pi Eta is the National Honor Society in Communication. The purpose of the Honor Society is to recognize, foster, and reward outstanding scholastic achievement in the field of communication and to promote and encourage professional development among communication majors. Membership in the society requires that students must major or minor in communication, achieve a 3.0 overall GPA, a minimum 325 GPA in their communication studies and rank in the top 35% of their class. All elected members shall exhibit high standards of personal and professional character. Please join me in congratulating the seniors and new members of Lambda Pi Eta. I now invite Dr. David Contasta, Professor of History, to come to the podium to recognize the members of Phi Alpha Theta.
Will the seniors and new members of Phi Alpha Theta please stand? <laughs> Phi Alpha Theta, the National Honor Society in History, requires a minimum GPA of 3.1 in history and a GPA of 3.0 or better overall. Eligible candidates must also be in the top 35% of their class and be approved by the department. Both majors and minors are eligible for nomination into the society upon completion of 12 credit hours of coursework in history. Please join me in congratulating the seniors and new members of Phi of the Alpha Eta Psi chapter of Phi Alpha Theta. At this time, I would like to introduce Carmen Rogers, EDD, Professor of French and Spanish, to acknowledge the members of Phi Sigma Iota. <clears throat> Will the seniors of, and new members of Phi Sigma Iota please stand? Phi Sigma Iota recognizes outstanding accomplishment in the study or teaching of the academic fields related to foreign language, culture, and literature. Members are required to major or minor in one of the above fields, have a minimum overall GPA of 3.0, and have completed at least one course at the 200 level or above. They must also rank in the top 35% of their class, have attained junior status, and been approved by the department. Two hours before I congratulate the new members and senior, uh, graduating seniors, I would like to say that due to a cler clerical mistake, there are some names submitted in your program, and they are the, uh, Fer um, Fer Farida Ferrari, and Jocelyn Wilson, and Alessandra Sistrunk. To our senior members and newly inducted members of Phi Sigma Iota, felicitación, felicitaciones, congratulations. And now I would like to ask Dr. Jeffrey Carroll, Associate Professor of Political Science, to come to the podium for Pi Sigma Alpha. I invite seniors and new members of Pi Sigma Alpha to please stand. Pi Sigma Alpha, the National Political Science Honor Society, is an affiliate of the American Political Science Association and is the only honor society for college and university students of government in the United States. Membership in the local chapter requires a major or minor in political science, a ranking in the top 33rd percent of the class, a minimum of junior status, a political science GPA of 3.2, and the completion of four or more political science courses and be approved by the department. So please join me in congratulating the seniors and new members who have been invited into the Chester Hill College chapter of Pi Sigma Alpha. Since the purpose of Pi Sigma Alpha is to recognize and promote high academic achievement in the field of political science, the Chestnut Hill College chapter has established an annual book award to be received by the senior in Pi Sigma Alpha who has achieved the highest grade point average in both their political science courses and their overall studies. And the recipient of the Pi Sigma Alpha book award for 2022 is Trinity Simmons. Trinity, are you here? Trinity, OK. 
Okay, well, Trinity's not here. Let's please give her a round of applause. I'll make sure he get, she gets that book. And I would now ask Dr. Ian Sharp, Assistant Professor of Psychology, to come to the podium to recognize members of Psychi. Uh, I invite seniors and new members of Psychi to please stand. Psychi, the National Honor Society in Psychology, is an affiliate of both the American Psychological Association and the Association for Psychological Science. Membership in the local chapter requires a major or minor in psychology, a ranking in the top 35% of the class, a cumulative GPA of 3.2 or higher, a psychology GPA of 3.5 or higher, junior standing, completion of four or more psychology courses, and be accepted by the department. Uh, the following students have been invited into the Chestnut Hill College chapter of Psychi, the National Honor Society in Psychology. So congratulations, seniors and new members of Psychi. I invite Rita Borzillo, JD, Assistant Professor of Business, to in introduce Sigma Beta Delta. I am pleased to invite the seniors and new members of Sigma Beta Delta to stand. Come on, you're out there, I know you are. Sigma Beta Delta is the International Honor Society for Students in Business, Management, and Administration. Induction into Sigma Beta Delta is an honor that is reserved for those students with superior academic success in the study of business and an honor based upon a cumulative record of achievement. These students have achieved a GPA of at least 3.5, are in the top 20% of their class, completed at least 60 credits towards their degree, and are of the character and the integrity benefiting an honorable member of the society. Congratulations. <laughs> Would Jeffrey Carroll, PhD Associate Professor of Political Science, please come to the podium to introduce the members of Sigma Iota Rho. Will the new members and seniors of Sigma Iota Rho please stand? <laughs> Sigma Iota Rho is an honor society for international studies. These students have completed 21 credits in the multidisciplinary area of global affairs. They have earned an overall GPA of 3.3 and a 3.4 GPA in their international affairs coursework. Please join me in congratulating the seniors and new members who have been invited into the Chestnut Hill College chapter of Sigma Iota Rho. Congratulations, uh, Dr. Suzanne Del Gizzo, pr Professor of English, will now recognize the members of Sigma Tau Delta. I invite the seniors and newly inducted members of Sigma Tau Delta to please stand. Sigma Tau Delta is the International English Honor Society. The Society's central purpose is to confer distinction upon students of English language and literature in undergraduate, graduate, and professional studies. 
Members in the society, oh sorry, membership in the society requires that students be English or English and writing majors or minors, achieve a 3.0 GPA in the major or minor, and rank in the top 35% of their class. Once inducted, the society's members work actively to promote the appreciation of literature and writing on our campus. It is my pleasure to, to congratulate the seniors and the newly inducted members of Sigma Tau Delta. Would Dr. Joseph Kolkowski, Professor of Biology, please come up to the podium to introduce the members of Sigma Zeta. Good afternoon, everybody. Will the, new, will the seniors and newly inducted members of Sigma Zeta please stand? Hello. Thank you. Sigma Zeta is the National Science and Mathematics Honor Society. This national undergraduate society encourages and fosters scholarly activity and recognizes academic scholarship in the natural sciences, computer sciences, and mathematics. Students must have a GPA of 3.0 to qualify and be in good departmental standing. Students must also have completed the equivalent of 25 credits, including 15 credits in the natural sciences. A very hearty congratulations to all members of Sigma Zeta. I now invite Dr. Stephen Martin to recognize the students who have been inducted into Theta Alpha Kappa. I invite the seniors and newly inducted members of Theta Kappa Alpha to please stand. You're present. <laughs> Theta Alpha Kappa is the National Honor Society for Religious Studies and Theology. Induction requires nomination by a local chapter and to be eligible, a student must have a 3.5 GPA in religious studies and or theology, a 3.0 GPA overall, and be approved by the department. Please join me in congratulating the seniors and new members of Theta Alpha Kappa. Congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Karen Wendling, Associate Professor of Chemistry, who now introduced the first of our special award recipients. At this time, I would like to announce the recipient, recipients, plural, of the Chemistry Award for a first year student. Each year, the chemistry department recognizes a student who has shown superior achievement in their first year chemistry studies. The recipients of this year's award are Riley Harker and Kaya Johnson. Please come forward to accept your award. Congratulations again. The chemistry department is also proud to be able to present a certificate from the Philadelphia section of the American Chemical Society to honor outstanding achievement in chemistry. Would Marta Tenderak please come forward.
congratulations, Marta. And we'll wish you best of luck with your physical chemistry test later today. <laughs> <laughs> I now invite Dr. Nora Madison, Associate Professor of Communications, to the podium. The Mary Ann, Awa the Mary Ann Walsh Award in Communication is given to one graduating senior from the Media and Communication Program at Chestnut Hill College. The recipient must have at least a 3.0 or higher overall GPA, must have completed a communication internship, and truly exemplify the mission and live out the core values of the institution. Marianne L. Wash earned a bachelor's degree in communications and technology from Chestnut Hill College in 1998 and a master's degree in leadership and applied technology from the School of Graduate Studies in 2002. She currently serves as a member of the Board of Directors of the college. Marianne credits her career success to her education at CHC in sponsoring this award to a media and communication senior she hopes to inspire the next generation of Chestnut Hill graduates. This year's recipient is a scholar, a leader, and a friend to all in the program. He is a McGuire Scholar with a GPA of 3.50, as well as a member of Lambda Pi Eta, the National Honor Society for Communication. He is also the Program Production Coordinator for Griffin Media, the college's student-driven TV channel. In this leadership role, he curates media content for the channel, while also remaining active in producing and directing new multimedia. Most notably, he is a dedicated learner, leaning into new challenges and remaining open to constructive feedback. He has a gentle, encouraging leadership style and truly exemplifies the college's mission throughout his four successful years at Chestnut Hill. Please welcome this year's recipient, John Wright. I now invite Sister Mary Helen Kashuba, Professor of Fr French and Russian, to the podium. The Outstanding Senior in French Award is given by the American Association of Teachers of French to a graduating senior who has maintained an A average in French and a minimum of B GPA, who has studied French consistently for at least three years, and who has shown exceptional commitment to the study of French. This includes participation in extracurricular activities, teaching and tutoring, and membership and leadership in the Honor Society. We are proud to present this award to Alana Siegler. Please, please come forward. Ryan Bender, Director of Campus Ministry, will announce the Dorothea E. Fenton Memorial Medal. The Dorothea E. Fenton Memorial Medal was first presented at Honors Convocation in 1929. It was established by the college's first graduating class, the class of 1928, 
in honor of their classmate, Dorothea Fenton, who had died a week before their graduation. The 1931-1932 college catalog notes that the award is given in recognition of the nearest attainment to the ideals symbolized by Miss Fenton's personal record in the college, eager pursuit of all that pertains to the higher life of the spirit and gracious courtesy in all contacts of life. The medal represents Dorothea's legacy of joy, sincerity, and loyalty, and her tremendous interest in the adventure of life. The medal bears the inscription, the fruit of the spirit is charity. Today, we honor a senior known for interest in others, kindness, friendliness, and genuine care for the dear neighbor. Seniors are nominated for this award by faculty, staff, and students, and the recipient is chosen by the Honors Committee, an almost impossible task given that we are blessed by many wonderful young people who live this ideal. And so we honor this year's nominees. Please stand as I call your name. Pierre Alsager, Leica Augustine, Xavion Cross, Brianna Hewlett, Kayla Russell, Jonathan Spurnall, Caitlin Zygafus, Dalila Zagani. Please be seated, congratulations. I address the 2022 recipient of the Dorothea E. Fenton Medal in the words of those who nominated and interviewed you. Kind and friendly, Two words used to describe Dorothea Fenton are often the first two words that many use to describe you. You are a quiet and welcoming presence in the classroom and at campus ministry events. You model a sincere love of all that pertains to the higher life of the spirit. Through your four years at Chestnut Hill College, you have grown immensely, always maintaining a commitment to stepping outside your comfort zone to learn more about yourself and the world around you. You've demonstrated an eager, joyful pursuit of all the college has had to offer you. You've also shown a deep commitment to reflection and growing in self-awareness, prayerfully and thoughtfully discerning about how you feel called to use your gifts and talents after you graduate. Service is at the heart of who you are, a regular participant in many service opportunities available through campus ministry. You also donate so much of your time to tutor your peers, you are a respected and cherished friend to whom many go seeking advice and insight. You show genuine care for the dear neighbor in these and so many more ways. Your own words attest to your pursuit of a life that is characterized by compassion, solidarity, and service. You write, because of the different service opportunities I took part in, I learned that there are several ways to help my dear neighbor. I learned that the smallest act, although it may seem insignificant, can have a big effect. A seemingly insignificant act of compassion can put a smile on someone's face and make an impact on that person's life. Please join me in congratulating Dalila Zagani. The St. Catherine Medal of the Kappa Gamma Pi Honor Society is awarded to a sophomore or junior who, quote, represents the high ideals of a Catholic college education, end quote. The recipient is selected on the basis of his or her leadership and service. Nomination for this medal is an honor in itself. 
And so we first acknowledge each of the students nominated by college faculty, staff, and students. Each nominee is a generous, zealous, vibrant member of our community. In the spirit of Kappa Gamma Pi, all have been nominated, not only for what they have already accomplished, but also because we are confident that they will continue to exemplify the high ideals of a Catholic education expressed in their leadership and service. You have truly proven by your actions that you are, quote, ready for any and all good works, end quote. We are richer for your presence among us. Please stand when I call your name and hold your applause until all the names have been called. Milani Amador, Jacqueline Koval, Sophie Motis, Nayali Rodriguez, Emily Sanders, Chloe Youngblood. Congratulations. Please be seated. I address this year's recipient of the St. Catherine Medal in the words of those of you who nominated and interviewed. In so many ways, you exemplify the high ideals of a Catholic college education. You are warm and inviting and take time, despite being incredibly busy, to be fully present to those around you. You truly embody the mission of the college and the Sisters of St. Joseph to bring all dear neighbors together. You have embraced the college and it embraced you. In your own words, when I first arrived at CHC, I felt scared and afraid. However, I soon realized that I had a family within this community. CHC quickly became my home away from home. Since then, I have made it my mission to help provide students with the resources needed to be successful. You are truly a success in all areas of college life. Academically, you are a member of the college's honors program, a member of the Epsilon Pi Tau Honor Society, a Tishner Greer Scholar, and a member of the Alpha Lambda Delta Academic Honor Society. Regarding service to others, you show a genuine concern for all other students and go above and beyond to help those who may be struggling or need an extra kind word. You volunteer at open houses, move-in days, orientation, and agape latte. These are all examples of your willingness to serve and support our community. As a leader on campus, you are a resident life assistant, a student ambassador, the co-president of the VAS Latina, the vice president for HTCIA, and were elected Chestnut Hills student government president. As if you were not busy enough, somehow you are able to do all of this while working three jobs. Finally, one notable story you shared with the Honors Committee, which bears repeating here. You told them that when you arrived on campus as a freshman and read about the St. Catherine's Medal, you told your family members, I'm going to win that award. <laughs> well, mission accomplished. The St. Catherine Medal goes to Nayali Rodriguez.
Since Chris turned the pages for everybody else, I thought I'd turn the pages for him. In closing, we would like to express our appreciation to everyone who made this event possible, including facilities and housekeeping departments and dining service. In particular, thanks to our vocalist, Julia Strafacci, accompanied by Sister Kathleen McCluskey on the piano. Thank you also, Suzanne Harkins, for your careful planning in this year's Honors Convocation and the preparation for day, today's program booklet. Thank you as well to all of our volunteers today. At this time, it's my pleasure to invite everyone to a reception in the St. Joseph Hall Rotunda following the ceremony. Now, please stand for the benediction that will be offered by Nashalit Achoa and remain standing for the singing of the Chestnut Hill College alma mater, which is found in the program and that will be led by Julia Strafacci. The recessional will immediately follow the alma mater. Dear God, we thank you for gathering each one of us here to celebrate the wonderful people that make up our community. In those moments, in these moments of turmoil and instability, it is easy to dismiss time for peace, celebration, and gratitude. So we thank you for providing us with this space. The thoughtfulness, the passion for education, the responsibility, and the leadership recognized here today reflects, uh, reflects the caliber within CHC. The talent and drive is evident in the success we celebrate, but humble us and give us the wisdom to recognize the hidden turmoils, struggles, and questioning that paved the journey. These awards are but a step in the process those recognized today live through and will go through. We thank you for empowering us, but guide us to learn from each other rather than just forget, and let us connect rather than just walk back as singularities. Give us the guidance to utilize and support the talent present here today to move forward as a community and to gather more people at the table. What we can do alone is multiplied when we do it together. So let the end of this afternoon become a beginning. Widen our perception of success so we can leave here with agency as the mission of the Sisters of St. Joseph states. We, as, de as dear neighbors, are committed to a more unified and just global society. We are committed to protecting the environment and the vulnerable allow us to recognize the qualities already present within us that equips us to contribute to this mission. Let us transform today's empowerment into action that reflects these values, and let us find ways to do it together. Allow for justice, love, consciousness, and understanding to guide our future choices, and give us the grit to embark on the future that furthers the principles of our mission within and outside of CHC. Amen. Sunset 